communication as a tool in the management of our homes to nature sustain peace in our homes how do we use communication as a tool and one of the things you can easily use as an effective tool in the management of your husband your children and then also your house is communication and when you are going to use the communication there are three basic elements in the communication that we mentioned yesterday we said one of them that has the least effect is being given the highest regard the highest significance and psychologically this big misconception you people think that it is that one that can solve your case of what communication if you want to use only words just like the way i am talking to affect and change you people that with only that particular words out of 100 people over here is only seven that can get affected so the words we use have only seven percent on the people we want to change and then also the vocal qualities of our communication takes 38 percent and then our character in the house the way we behave towards our husband and the way we behave towards our children it communicates to them and the effect on that one is more than 55 percent the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam lived for 63 years out of the 63 years the first 40 years allah didn't let him use words he kept quiet no words he kept quiet 40 years allah didn't let him use his voice for them to know how nice his voice was he was quiet he didn't use words he didn't use any voice for somebody to know whether his voice was nice or not he did not do that one but what allah azza wa jal made him to use for the entire world and the entire arabia to see was actually his behavior and his character 40 years his behavior and his character 40 years out of the 63 years actually will give you more than the 50 percent so the more we are silent and the more we use our behavior the more effective we become within the community within every environment that we find ourselves but the more we talk the more less effective we become in our houses so we need to reduce the amount of words we use in the house and increase the amount of works we use in the house the only difference is d and k we have to reduce the amount of words we use in the house and increase the amount of works we use in the house then we invite the angels and we invite the mercy of god almighty allah in the house we have a lot to talk about communication but as i started yesterday i would like to give you 10 principles and if you study these 10 principles very well and try to apply it in any of the forms of your communication it could be you are talking to your child you are talking to your husband you are preaching or you are teaching in classroom wherever you are or you are counseling if you make use of these 10 principles definitely you increase the effectiveness of your communication we said number one is your intention my mother before you speak ask yourself why do you want to speak you are speaking because you want to effect a change you want to effect a change that is why you want to speak 
You want to effect a change from bad to good, from good to better, from better to best. And from best to what? A son. You want excellence. Keep that in mind. Never and never forget about that one. And the change you want, you want that change for the sake of Allah. Allah. The pillar and the root of your change is Allah. So remove any other desire from your heart and throw away and put only Allah. That is the only change you want. La ilaha illallah. So you have some desires in your heart that are smaller goals. Before you speak, remove those desires and throw away. And don't mix those desires with your desire to spark hatred and anger within you to accompany your speech in such a way that you lose the intention and the reason, the goal, the reason why, the purpose you want to speak and you begin to shout and you begin to insult and you begin to hurt the other side. Yesterday I said, the intention is number one, your own intention. Discover it, activate it, and then also attach a result and a goal to your intention. Also discover the intention of the one you are going to speak to your husband. Discover the intention of your child that is hidden within the fitra of your husband and within the fitra of your child. And all deeds that are hidden within the fitra, within our nature, our desire and instinct for such deeds are not haram. It is when we bring it up to the level of amal, to the level of deed, that they become what? Haram. The desire to have a lady within us, that lust, it is not what? Haram. But when we bring it up to the level of amal, and we decide to go and apply it on somebody else, not our husband, not our wife, that is when it becomes what? Haram. So you the one who is going to speak. Try and know what is in the makeup of your husband. What is in the makeup of your child. What instinct, what desire is in the fitra of your husband. Is in the fitra of your child. That your husband or your child is trying to respond to it in a wrong way. In a wrong way. Discover that one. So try to know his hidden intention. Those hidden intentions are normally halal. Try to know that one. And know what you want to achieve from that particular communication. With what you want to say, with the interaction you want to do, you want to achieve this. Keep that in mind. Clear your heart with la ilaha illallah and keep only Allah in your mind and that in your mind as you speak and as you interact with your husband. And as you interact with what? Your child. That is the intention. But after the establishment of our intention. And the discovery of the intention of the recipient. And then our establishment of a goal. The resource that we want to get out of this particular interaction. Then we move to the next level. That we say the location and time. We have to ensure that. We are in a positive location. And the time that is available or the time is also okay for us to speak with our husband. Our husband will get ready, take the bag and he's moving out. Already he's going to catch up with a meeting outside. There is a meeting, there is this thing outside. That is the time you want to quarrel with your husband. That is the time you want to discuss something with your husband. No. He cannot give you what? The attention at that particular time. So you look at the location and you look at the time before you can talk. If within the location you have your children, your girls, your boys, they are all there, maybe an uncle or somebody else, then you stand within that particular environment, then you want to advise your husband. No. Men by nature... 
will find it difficult to receive anything whether good or bad that comes in a form of command from their wives they don't want to do that one it is not only men psychologically every leader doesn't want to receive anything at all any advice at all that comes as a command to him as a because he is put in the position to command and you as the followers are put in the position to receive the command so if you command the leader it becomes a, the word we give to the commandments is advice you rather what advise the leader so you advise the husband and if you are a smart wife no matter good the advice is no matter good the advice is don't make the origin look like it is coming from you but the origin should come from him from your what husband the origin should come from somebody your husband respect the origin should come from somebody your husband also admit and recognizes as his leader then your husband will find it what comfortable to receive uh, that advice but you want to give it direct to him from him if the husband is somebody who doesn't fear Allah very much he will resist you have been brought to him for him to train you but not for you to train him unfortunately these are some of the thinking of what some of the husbands you need to be very conversant and careful about your husband's reference point and preferences who does your husband respect what does he say you need to be careful about that one so that from time to time you can make reference to that one but not coming from what you so the time and location is very important the location should not be a place where there are so many people there if there is privacy in the location that is the best if there is less noise in the location that is the best if there is enough lightning and then also enough ventilation that is also what the best especially if it is not things that is relating to intimacy intimacy romance that one with a dim light that is also what better than bright what light then the best time for you normally it is the time that he is less busy or scheduled what time the only thing you can rush is to rush for prayers anything that disturbs you as a wife you want to rush rush and pray rush and perform ablution rush and open your hand and rush and tell allah rabbana atina min ladunka rahmatan lana min amrina rashadan leave the case in the hands of allah azza wa jal leave the case that allah should shower mercy on you and your family and he should choose for you the best leave it in the hands of allah azza wa jal and sit back and see what allah will do for you rush in your prayers and in your worship and then in your zikr and your askar rather than in addressing what your husband so location and time is very important then number three is also after the location and time what 